as I invite Brother Ade Kombi to share the word today. Just celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your glory. We thank you, Father, for provision. We thank you for protection. We thank you, Father, for sustenance. We thank you, Father, for victory. We thank you, Father, for conquest. We thank you, Father, for triumph. We thank you, Father, for being our shield. Thank you, Father, for being our buckler. Thank you, Father, for being our refuge. Thank you, Father, for being our fortress. Thank you, Father, for being our defense. Thank you, Father, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Father, for health. Thank you, Father, for wholeness. Thank you, Father, for signs. Thank you, Father, for wonders. Thank you, Father, for miracles. Thank you, Father, for knowledge. Thank you, Father, for understanding. Thank you, Father, for wisdom. Thank you, Father, for trials. Thank you, Father, for temptations. Thank you, Father, for testimonies. Thank you, Father, for our houses. Thank you, Father, for our homes. Thank you, Father, for our surroundings. Thank you, Father, for our families. Thank you, Father, for our friends. Thank you, Father, for our enemies. Thank you, Father, for our careers. Thank you, Father, for our work. Thank you, Father, for our jobs. Thank you, Father, for our businesses. Thank you, Father, for our professions. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for giving us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Thank you, Father, for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank you, Father, for this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Thank you, Father, for all things are working together for our good. Thank you, Father, for the lines are falling on us in pleasant places. Thank you, Father, for perfecting all that concerns us. Thank you, Father, for performing all things for us. Thank you, Father, for making a server of your knowledge known through us in every place. Thank you, Father, for we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Father, in your word, it is written that they go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears in Zion before God. In your word, it is written that upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Therefore, I decree and declare, because we have come, we are coming to higher levels of strength in Jesus' name. I decree that because we have come, we are coming to high levels of deliverance and holiness in Jesus' name. As your word comes forth, let it come forth with power, let it come forth with precision, and let it bless the hearers in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Okay. It's a great honor to be here once again to um, bring the word of life to you. Um, I want to appreciate the grace of God upon our pastor, Pastor Kyrie. Thank you for inviting me, sir. Thank you for extending the hand of fellowship unto me. May God continues to cause you to fulfill destiny in Jesus name okay so um, I will be preaching today on a topic titled the Bible and your brain the Bible and your brain but I'll be looking at a topic titled a subtopic titled from knowledge to understanding from knowledge to understanding praise the Lord okay so I came here first of all on a video and I laid a foundation and we continued on Tuesday um, during digging deep so I'll mention some of the things I Indeed, I'll do just a little recap. I'll mention some of the things that I spoke about, and then I'll build on that. I'm going to say some things today that I never said on, during the video and on Tuesday. Praise the Lord. So I'll lay a foundation and then bring in a couple of new things. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, there are certain things that are sacrosanct as regards making the most out of your brain. Um, on the day that I came, I did an exercise, and I want to do it again because it's very necessary, uh, and I will explain to you, for those who were not here, why it is so necessary to do so. So what I did was a little exercise. I said, I want a woman to just mention any chapter in the book of Proverbs, a man to do so, and then I will recite everything from my head. And I said that I want you to understand why I'm going to do it. So it may appear childish, you may wonder what is it for, but the Bible says that God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And you know what the Bible says, that he would teach us line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. So I'll go ahead to do so, and then I will explain to you why it is necessary. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let a woman just mention any chapter. I will do it with at least 90% accuracy. If I'm stuck, I'll ask you to help me, but at least 90% accuracy. Okay, Proverbs 10, okay. Uh, a gentleman, any gentleman mention any chapter? 11, very good. So I'll do 10 and 11, praise the Lord. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 10, the Proverbs of Solomon, a wife's son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profiteth nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. He becometh poor. 
that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. He that gareth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall wrath. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but the praising fool shall fall. Um, he that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his way shall be known. He that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow, but a praising fool shall fall. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but the rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Um, the wise in heart, the wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. A rich man's wealth is a strong city, and the destruction of the poor is their poverty. Um, that's six, now 16. The labor of the righteous tended to life, but the fruit of the wicked to sin. He's in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. Now 18. He that uttereth like, he that uttereth a slander, and he that he, he that hadeth his hatred with nine lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words, what they not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is little word. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. Um, the blessing of the Lord, he maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is as spot to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. He that, um, no, the, the desire of the wicked will come upon him. The, the fear of the wicked will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Um, 25. As the, as the whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. 26. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the slugger to them that send him. The fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous shall be gladdest, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Now, that's 29. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be moved, but the wicked shall in, inhabit. The righteous shall never be moved, and the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the righteous, no, the, not, the mouth of the just, 31, the mouth of the just bring it for wisdom, but the four tongues shall be cut out. Now, 32 and the final verse, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, praise the Lord. I want to explain why I did what I did. I want to explain it. You may not understand. Um, I wanted to share, I will share a testimony with you. I shared it on Tuesday when I came. I noticed that when I was young, my attention span was very poor, very, very poor. Um, I shared a testimony of how one day, or a story, an experience of how one day my mother asked me to lace my shoe. She just asked me to lace my shoe. I was young. I was, couldn't have been more than eight years old, not even up to eight years old. And I just lost concentration. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, she came back about five minutes later, I had not laced my shoes. Praise the Lord. Because I just drifted away. I noticed that when I was in class, the same thing would happen. I noticed that um, even when I got into, into university, there was a day I went to the university to read, the university library. And in two hours, I was only able to assimilate two pages. It was very frustrating. Every time I just tried to read, my attention would just drift away and drift away. Now, about 10 years ago, the Holy Spirit began to teach me certain principles on how you can strengthen your brain. And I began to work with those principles, and those are some of the principles that I want to share today. I want to share some of those principles today. You just began to work with me on certain principles, and some of those principles I want to share in practical terms today. Praise the Lord. I want to say to you that you can build your brain to become whatever you want it to become. You can build your brain to become whatever you want it to become. In fact, the Bible makes us understand that we can renew our mind. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, I had poor attention. By practicing sense principles, I've, decided, I've discovered that it has become much, much better. Apart from that, you can also increase, you see, your brain controls about 11 different functions. And I'll show you from the Bible. One of them is creativity, your ability to be innovative. Your brain controls that. And you can build innovative, uh, your creativity. The same way I built my knowledge to be able to contain this. Let me tell you something. Some of you, do you know that you can have the whole Bible in your head? Praise the Lord. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Praise the Lord. Let it dwell in you what? Richly. Praise God. For example, let me give some. Some of you feel like I've seen some parents in the body of Christ that if their child is left-handed, their child is left-handed, they try to change the 
hand of a child, from being a left-handed child to a right-handed child. Praise the Lord. Do you know why they do so? Because they are not sound in the word of God. I may bold to say that. They are not sound in the word of God. If they were sound in the word of God, they would never do that. You know why? Let me show you something in the Bible. Judges chapter 20 and verse 16. Judges 20, 16. Listen, look at this. It says, among all these people, there were 700 chosen men, left-handed. Every one of them could sling stones at an hair breath and not miss. Did you see that? The Bible says that, listen, that there were 700 extraordinarily gifted men. Huh? That they, were, they had what? The spirit of precision. They could fight so that they could sling stones at an hair breath, the breath of a hair, and not miss. Which means they were geniuses. They were great in battle. And the Bible says, one common thing about all these men, these men, is that all of them were left-handed. Praise the Lord. It means that every left-handed person carries a specific anointing for precision in whatever they do. Praise the Lord. Now, a child is left-handed. You now change the child of the person from left to right. And you alter the destiny of the child. Praise the Lord. Why? Because they are not sound in the word of God. Praise the Lord. They don't have, there's nothing wrong in having, the, the Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you what? Richly. There's nothing wrong in having the whole Bible in your head. You know what I'm saying, so? A man of God that I know, he invited a woman to his office. He said, God said, you are my wife. And he said, God said, I shall anoint you. And he took anointing oil. He anointed her. As if it was not enough. He took her top off. At that time, she didn't know that this one is not from God. From there, he took her skirt off. Eventually, you know where he was released to now? He had slept with her. Do you know why Christians are gullible nowadays? Because the word of God is not in their head. Praise the Lord. The word of God is not in their head. So, what I'm trying to say is that if we had the Bible in our head, and please, I want to appeal to you, I'm going to say entirely new things in the second service that I didn't say in any of those two services. If you have the Bible in your head, number one, it will help your ability to comprehend truth. You, it will help your decision making, just like in the first example I gave, left-handed, right-handed, for example. Secondly, it will help you appreciate so many things uh, that we are doing differently uh, that you would have done in a certain manner because you have better understanding. Praise the Lord. It will help you academically. Praise God. It will help you in your business. It will help you manage your emotions. I'm going to show that very soon. It will help you manage your emotions. It will help every blessed area of your life. Praise God. It will help every area of your life if you had the word of God. Praise God. For example, let me share another passage. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 17. Proverbs 21, 17. It says, he that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. Praise God. If everybody understood this, if everybody understood this, uh, a lot of people who wallow in poverty will not be wallowing in poverty. Praise God. Just a little... So if we had the word of God in our head, there are some times that I want to do something, but because I just have the word of God in my head, uh, because I just have it in my head, it just puts me in check. Praise the Lord. For, let me give you an, one more example. One more example. Why is it good to have the whole Bible in your head? I was raised by a single mother. A single mother. Praise the Lord. And I noticed that my mother and I were not very, after a while, we started to have, you know, these normal clashes that a son and a mother will have, praise the Lord. But having the whole Bible in my head eh, brought me out of those things, those, those, those vices that could have easily destroyed me, praise the Lord. I want to show you two things from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 20. Proverbs 23 and verse 22, sorry. Proverbs 23, 22. He says, hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she's old. Did you see that? Because some of you, you say that, ah, my mother is old-fashioned. She doesn't understand. He said that there are these things. Eh, that you know what? You know what? You know, she doesn't even, she, she can't even use email. She can't do, hey, whether she can use email or not, whether she's on Instagram or not, the Bible says, don't despise her when she's old. Praise the Lord. But you know what? Eh? If you don't have this word in your head regularly, it's possible that you get to a point that you say, ah, I beg, she's, too, she's, oh, she, she's, she's anachronistic, Joe. She doesn't know, she doesn't know what's up. Praise the Lord. Let me share another one with you. Let me share another one with you. 
Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 20. Proverbs 15, 20. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Can you see that? You see, can you see, the Bible doesn't say a foolish man despises his father. It's specific as regards what? The mother. Why? So you should ask yourself why. Praise the Lord. Do you know that by course of nature, let me show you something. I'll show you something from the Bible and you, so that you, you understand something. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. Proverbs 1, 7. Yes. Now let's go to the next verse, 8. It says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Listen to this. So let's be. Fathers give instructions. Mothers give laws. There's a difference between an instruction and a law. An instruction helps you in the short term. A law helps you in the long term. Because mothers see farther than men. So a man can only help you. I mean, an instruction can only help you in the short term. Praise the Lord. But a law helps you what? In the long term. Laws are specific. I mean, sorry. Instructions are specific. Laws are what? General. Praise the Lord. Let's go to another one. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 20. Proverbs 6, 20. He says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Can you see law and mothers coming? Because a man doesn't have what it, is, what it takes to give a law. He wasn't created for that. He was created for commandments and instructions. His mothers that were created for laws. So when you despise your mother, listen, the men in the Bible that were close to their mothers fulfilled their destinies. The ones that were not close to their mothers did not fulfill their destiny. Esau, for example, the one that was close to his father did not fulfill his destiny. It was Jacob that was close to his mother that fulfilled his destiny. Why? Because men can only give instructions. It is mothers that give laws. Praise the Lord. Now, can you see why it's good to have the Bible in your head? Because, let me tell you something. When, they go to, when, you, go, when you go for advice, huh, and they give you advice, the reason why some of you can't take advice is because you don't have the Bible in your head. When you have the Bible in your head, you understand certain things so that when it's time to get advice, you take it easily. Praise the Lord. Do you understand now? If somebody is trying to advise me on this thing, if the person doesn't need more than one minute, I'll be nodding my head, I'll be smiling. Because I'll tell because why? I understand it. Praise the Lord. That's why it's for every Christian. The Bible says, let the word of Christ do what? Let it dwell in you what? Richly. Every Christian should have the whole the Bible in your head. It should, it should dwell in you richly. Let me show you one more thing that Peter said. Peter said something very crucial. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. He says, sanctify the Lord in your heart and be always ready or be ready always, not that word always, to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and God. He says, be, have the word of God in your head so that you can always give an answer to every man, always ready. Not as he say, uh, let me check the Bible first. No, always ready. Hallelujah. Always ready to give an answer to every man. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you one more thing. You know why a lot of people are susceptible to bad habits? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because if the word of God, eh, if your mind is not busy, your feelings will be busy. Did you hear that? If your mind is not busy, your feelings will be busy. And bad habits start from feelings, not from the mind. See, I need two people to come. Two people, come. Come. Please come. Face, come. Face, and just. Please, listen to this carefully. Just watch. Please, just watch. Your mind, your soul is divided into your emotions, your will, and your mind. Did you see that? Your emotions, your will, and your mind. Watch this carefully. Watch this carefully. Huh? Your mind is the strength of your soul. Your emotions are the weakness of your soul. What did I say? Your mind is the way? The strength of your soul. You are not transformed. 
you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. So transformation happens in the mind, not in the emotions. Hello? Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verse 9. Let me show you something. Ecclesiastes 6 and verse 9. It says, better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. Did you see that? Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the word desire. Now, it, it means that better is mental exercise than emotional exercise. The sight of the eyes refers to your mind. Your mind. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 14. Ecclesiastes 2, 14. It says, a wise man's eyes are where? They are in his head. In where? His head. His head. When the Bible talks about eyes, it means your brain. The wise man's eyes are where? In his head. His head. His head. Praise the Lord. But a fool walks in darkness. Praise the Lord. Go back to that previous chapter. Go back to that previous chapter, please. Um, 6 and verse 9. It says, better in sight of the eyes, mental exercise, than the wandering of desire, emotional exercise. Praise God. Back to what I'm saying. The transformation happens in the mind, not in the emotions. Huh? Inventions, innovations, they happen in the mind, not in the emotions. Proactivity, if you are going to be diligent, it's a function of your mind. The Bible says, I mean, people say, I've made up my mind to do something, not I've made up my emotions. I've made up my mind. Hello? Hello? Now, if your mind is not busy, your emotions will be busy. When a person's emotions become busy, look at what happens. It starts with strong feelings lead to what? Somebody feels like masturbating and then it masturbates. Pornography comes in from there, fornication, and, one, and then there's a ripple effect. So the feelings become busy. Strong feelings lead to what? Strong decisions. The wrong decisions. Wrong decisions lead to the wrong actions. Wrong actions lead to the wrong habits. Wrong habits lead to the wrong character. Wrong character leads to the wrong destiny. Can you see how it follows? But it starts with what? Strong feeling. If your mind is not busy, your emotions will be busy. One of the ways to keep your mind busy is to always have the word of God bubbling in your head. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, you know what David said? He says, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all throughout the day. All the day. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. So, that's why I think it is very necessary that you get to a point that you are always, you have the word of God in your head. The word of God should be, you should have the whole, your desire, your vision is that the whole Bible, the whole, the Bible says all scripture is given for doctrine, for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all scripture, all scripture, all scripture, all scripture, praise the Lord. Where God was going to turn around my life, the scripture with, in my reading life, the scripture he gave me was from Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. If I'm too busy, if I prefer all those, some people say, Nehemiah, it's only mathematical, look and join you like. You like Ephesians, you don't mean Nehemiah. They despise those books. Go to Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. Let me show you something. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8 says, see, they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Did you see that? They gave the sense and caused them to understand what? The reading. And God showed me there that if, for me, if you can read distinctly, you will make sense out of it. If you can make sense out of it, you will make them understand. You, you will cause people to understand what you're reading. And then he spoke to me, write as you read, recall as you read, and recite as you read. Praise the Lord. Boy, it was from Nehemiah. If you are too busy for some of those books, or if you, if you, are, not, if you are not sound in some of those, you see, hidden mysteries are embedded in some of those books that people don't go to. Praise the Lord. That's why you should have all scripture in your head. Praise the Lord. Now, let me talk about how you can go from knowledge to understanding. Very simple. Listen to me very carefully. Huh? Knowledge is good, but understanding is better. Did you hear that? How many of you know that it is wrong to, tobacco smoking is dangerous to health? I don't know, those people who smoke, they know. But do you know why they do it? Because they don't understand. Now, let me tell you how knowledge goes, becomes understanding. Repetition converts knowledge to understanding. Repetition converts what? Knowledge to what? Understanding. I want to establish one or two things. Let's go to Proverbs chapter um, 10 and verse 11. Proverbs 10 and 11. The mouth of a righteous man is a well. Is what? What is it? What is it? A well. Is a well, right? Good. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 14. 
Proverbs 22 and verse 14. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. The mouth of a righteous man is what? The mouth of a strange woman is what? One is a well, the other is a pit. Very good. Huh? One is a well, the other is a pit. Now, what do you mean between a well and a pit? A well and a pit. Simple. You go to a well where you want to get water. You go to receive from a well. You go to dump in a pit. Praise the Lord. Now, let me show you how knowledge becomes understanding. By the time you begin to compare, you begin to connect. Praise the Lord. Huh? You, become, you now have what? Understanding. Let's go to another passage. I'll show you something in another passage. Um, Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 27. Proverbs 26, 27. It says, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. Did you see that? You know what? So when a person's mouth is a pit, the Bible says that the mouth of a strange woman is a pit. The Bible says if you dig a pit, you will fall there. Some people, their mouths are pits. So their mouth puts them into trouble. Praise the Lord. Listen. If a man's mouth is always putting him into trouble, his mouth is a pit. Because the Bible says if you dig a pit, you will fall therein. Now, if a man's mouth is a well, huh? People always come to well to, to get water. If people are always coming to you for advice, huh? if people always come to you, huh? your mouth is a well. If people come to you huh, for good things and they live happy, they live fulfilled, your mouth is a well. If people come to just dumb things, dumb things, and your mouth puts you into trouble, it's a pit. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor, is it your mouth a well or a pit? Praise the Lord. But you know what? You know what? You know what? How do you go from knowledge to a place of understanding? By comparing scriptures with scriptures. Repeating it over time. Repeating it over time. You begin to compare scriptures with scriptures. Scriptures with scriptures. First, you begin to connect. You make a connection. Ah, you know what? I've been doing meditation every day for the past 10 years. I've not missed one day of meditation. And so people ask me, how is it possible? I started with just five minutes. Five minutes alone. Yesterday I was busy. I went to speak somewhere. I tried to do at least, at least 10 to 15 minutes. Praise the Lord. Every day. Sometimes it's three hours. Okay, but sometimes at the lowest, 10 to 15 minutes. But guess what? The more I repeat, eh, the more I repeat, I just start to make connections. Connections. That are, the Bible talks about the mouth of a well, of a righteous man, and then the mouth of, let me see what, what, what's the connection. Let me see if I can get, the more you connect, the more you get understanding. Do you understand? And let me tell you why understanding is necessary. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 6. Proverbs 14 and verse 6. A scorner seeks wisdom and find it in all, but knowledge is easy unto him that understand it. Knowledge is easy unto him. You know what that means? It means that when you have understanding, knowledge will be easy for you. For example, a lot of people know that it is wrong to lie. People still tell lies. You know why? There's no understanding. There is no what? Understanding. Praise God. There is no understanding. Praise God. There's no understanding. And that's why it still happens. Praise the Lord. So, how do you get understanding? By doing what? Comparisons, connections, and what? Construction. For example, when you do a connection, eh, the next thing will be comparison. You begin to compare spiritual things with spiritual. Praise the Lord. And then after that, you come up with what? A construction. You come up with something out of it. And that is where you get what? Understanding. But listen, you don't just do it by just reading the word of God once in a while when you like. Praise the Lord. You do it by having an ethic of continuously repeating the word of God to yourself, repeating the word of God to yourself, taking the word of God, repeating it to yourself, repeating it to yourself, repeating it to yourself, and then as you are doing so, pam, light will spark up in you. There will be inspiration, and then there will be understanding. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the grace to bring your word to your people. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you take us from knowledge to understanding in Jesus' name. Help us, O oh Lord, to live by your word in Jesus' name. Help us to be doers of your word and not hearers only in Jesus' name. Give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So how many of you are going to try to start meditating as from today? They're going to try to start meditating. 
You know, how many of you are going to start small? Maybe just five minutes, praise the Lord. And taking the Bible, you know, you know, you can take the Bible and just speak. Just speak, maybe like five verses. I tell people, you can speak five verses five times in five minutes. You can take five verses of the Bible and just speak it to yourself. And then it just gets into your head. And then all the day long, it, it just goes to resonate in you, praise the Lord. And if you do so, you find that you're not just a person of knowledge. You are a person of understanding. And as you understand, you know what? Life comes. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 22, understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fools is fully. May God bless you in Jesus' name. No one can, no one.